Hi everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about cellular energy and cellular respiration. The molecule we use to store energy is ATP. ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. This is a molecule that we've seen before when we were talking about macromolecules. Adenosine is made up of adenine, a nucleotide base, plus ribose, the sugar used in RNA, plus not just one, but three phosphate molecules. Because each phosphate is negatively charged, it takes a lot of energy to hold three of them right next to each other. They repel each other. These high energy bonds hold on to energy for us and store it in the bonds until we need it. Once we need energy to do work in the cell, we can release the third phosphate. As the third phosphate bond is broken, energy is released, and now the energy molecule only has two phosphates. It is now called ADP, or adenosine diphosphate, di meaning two, for the two remaining phosphates. The energy released can do work, for example, performing active transport in the cell. When you eat a candy bar, you are not able to immediately use that candy bar for energy. We must catabolize the macromolecules such as fat and carbohydrates and harvest their energy to make ATP. This is what the cell uses for energy. But how do we do this? The process of cellular respiration catabolizes the food we eat and transforms it into usable energy or ATP. There are four stages to cellular respiration. Glycolysis, preparatory reaction, citric acid cycle, and the electron transport chain. Let's talk about each of them. The first stage, glycolysis, happens in the cytoplasm. The name of this stage, glycolysis, tells you what it is doing. Glyco means sugar, and lysis means to split or break. So this stage is where glucose, a six carbon sugar molecule, is broken into two three-carbon molecules called pyruvate. Oxygen is not required for this stage. The net ATP produced in this stage is two ATP. As we break the bonds between the carbon molecules, we also released some shared electrons from the covalent bonds. These electrons are picked up by high-energy electron carriers. When these carriers pick up electrons, they carry them straight to the mitochondria and deliver them to the electron transport chain. So the net products of glycolysis are two ATP, two pyruvate, and some electrons. The second stage of cellular respiration is the preparatory reaction. This stage prepares pyruvate, which was produced during glycolysis, for the citric acid cycle reactions. This happens in the mitochondria. Some electrons are also produced in this phase. The third stage of cellular respiration is the citric acid cycle. This happens in the matrix or inner part of the mitochondria. The pyruvate molecules are broken down in a stepwise fashion to release the electrons shared in the bonds. In doing this, the three carbons join together with oxygen and become the waste product, CO2. This is where all the CO2 we breathe out comes from. It is waste from cellular respiration. The net products are two ATP, six carbon dioxide, and some electrons, which are carried to the electron transport chain. The final stage in cellular respiration is the electron transport chain. This happens across the inner membrane of the mitochondria. At this point, all of the carbons and oxygens that made up glucose have been catabolized and removed as waste, but there is still a lot of energy left in those electrons that were carried here by the electron carriers. There are a series of transmembrane proteins that sit in this membrane. Each protein has the ability to accept and donate two electrons. The electron carriers drop off their electrons at the first protein, which accepts the electron and uses the energy to pump a hydrogen ion across the membrane, into the space between the inner and outer mitochondrial membranes. Then, this protein gives the electron to the next protein in line. 
This continues down a few different proteins until the electron is given to the final electron acceptor. This is a molecule that has such a high affinity for electrons, they will not be transferred again. The final electron acceptor is oxygen. If there is no oxygen, there is no pull on the electrons and the entire chain stops. As oxygen combines with electrons and also hydrogen, it forms water. This is called metabolic water and it becomes part of the internal environment. This water produced is not sufficient for life, so we must also drink outside water. The hydrogen gradient we create is harnessed in much the way a water wheel harnesses a stream. The hydrogen ions are charged and cannot flow back down their gradient into the mitochondrial membrane because they cannot pass through the membrane. However, we can open channels in the membrane, and as hydrogen ions are allowed to flow back through into the matrix, we use their kinetic energy to make ATP. The net production of ATP in this stage is about 32 to 34 ATP. Putting it all together, the total ATP produced from one molecule of glucose is about 38 ATP. Without oxygen to serve as the final electron acceptor in the electron transport chain, the entire process shuts down. If the chain shuts down, we can no longer pump hydrogen ions across the membrane and we lose our gradient. Without the gradient, we cannot harness the energy of the gradient to make ATP. The reason that you will die from a lack of oxygen is because your cells run out of ATP in under a few minutes. That's it for today. See you in class.